Good evening and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'll show you my landscape astrophotography gear and tell you what you need to get good results. It might surprise you though, it's not much and it can be done without breaking the bank. I'll talk about camera bodies, the lenses I use, tripods of course, star trackers and some other handy equipment you can use at night. Just a quick disclaimer before we begin, I am not sponsored in any way. All these products are bought with my own money and my opinions are based on my own experiences. So let's get started. Okay, first up are the camera bodies I use. Um, my main body at the moment is a Canon 6D. It's a uh, full frame DSLR camera, 20.2 megapixels. Um, I bought this one second hand and it can be bought for a bargain. I've seen these uh, go for under 400 euros at the moment and it still performs very well. I've had this one uh, Astro modified also, so it's extra sensitive to H-alpha nebulae, uh, which is mainly useful for deep sky photography and also uh, now the winter is coming, for example, uh, to photograph all the nice nebulae around the constellation Orion. The other camera body I'm using is the Fujifilm X-T2, which is filming me right now. Um, it's also pretty old. Uh, it is, uh, I think, also around 10 years. Uh, it can also be had for a bargain at the moment in the second-hand market, also around 400 euros, I think. Um, it's a mirrorless APS-C camera, so that means it has a crop factor of one and a half in this case. Uh, I use it uh, to film all my vlogs and I still use it uh, to shoot Astro uh, sometimes. I mean it's super lightweight, uh, portable and very handy. So what camera body uh, can you use to get started in landscape astrophotography? Uh, specifically a Canon 6D or a Fuji X-T2? No, of course not. I think you can use any camera body uh, which is a maximum of about 10 years old uh, with uh, which has a manual setting so that you can uh, yeah, set the exposure, the ISO um, and the aperture manually. Okay, so on to the lenses. Uh, the main lens I use uh, is a Sigma 14 to 24 mm f2.8, a Sigma Art series. Um, yeah, I think this is a very good lens. Uh, it is uh, yeah, pretty sharp uh, from 14 to 24 mm. Uh, it is only 2.8 so it's not the fastest lens available um, but since I'm using a star tracker in about 90% of the cases that just doesn't matter because I can track the sky and I can make my exposures as long as I want. It's also pretty handy it's a zoom lens so I can uh, make the full wide angle range uh, of 14 to 24 millimeters just with one lens without changing them in between the sessions. Uh, before this I have also used a Samyang Rokinon 24mm f1.4 or 1.8 I think it was, which was also a pretty good lens. Um, but make sure you get a good copy because the um, quality varies uh, in between um, yeah, examples. <laughs> um, the other lens uh, which I bought pretty recently is this um, plastic fantastic Canon 50mm f1.8 lens. Um, actually I've uh, shot this one uh, which is on the screen also with that lens. That lens is dirt cheap. It only cost me a new 139 euros and it can make brilliant exposures. Uh, you have to uh, stop it down just a little bit. Uh, I've shot this one at f4 uh, and then the stars are sharp enough to get some good results. Um, I also have a uh, Samyang Rokinon 135 f2 lying around here. Uh, this lens is just great. Um, especially uh, if you want to make uh, some more wide, wide field deep sky images uh, or a deep scape image which, which I have done uh, in a recent vlog which I'll put up here. Uh, yeah, it is super sharp uh, yeah, over the whole range I think. Uh, even at f2 the corners, the star corners are still very usable. Super good lens. On my Fuji I mainly use uh, also a Samyang Rokinon lens, it's a 12mm f2.0 and um, yeah, if you are using an APS-C camera uh, that in my opinion is the most bang for your buck lens. It's uh, super sharp, it is relatively fast, it's also very small and it is cheap. 
So if you are so if you want to start out, what lens do you want to use for landscape astrophotography? Um, I think um, preferably you need a yeah, wide-angle lens, say uh, 10 to maximum 24 millimeters, and it needs to be pretty fast. I mean. Um, F, an aperture of around 1.4, 1.8 would be great. Uh, but you can also start out uh, with a lens uh, with only uh, an aperture of 2.8. And even if you're using a star tracker, F4 will work pretty well. And also I advise you to just try and start with the lenses you already got. I mean, most cameras come with a standard kit lens. Uh, for example, this Fuji came with an uh, 18 to 55 millimeter lens, and that one works just fine. Just try to use it, get out there, and play around a bit. In nightscape photography, we expose for a long time. If you make single exposures, uh, you are shooting for, uh, say, 15 seconds, 15, 20 seconds. Uh, on a star tracker, you are uh, using uh, two minute exposures, for example. So that means the camera needs to remain still during the whole exposure. And therefore, you really need a tripod. Which tripod specifically? Actually, it doesn't really matter. Just use a tripod which feels stable enough in your weather conditions. So is this everything you need to get you started? Yes, it is. You only need a camera body, a relatively fast wide angle lens and a tripod and off you go. Of course, if you want even better results, uh, you can also use star trackers. So as most of you might know, the earth is rotating. That means if we expose for a long time for the stars. Uh, your stars will appear uh, not as round dots, but um, are smeared out, you know, so uh, that's also how you can get star trails. So we only have a maximum exposure time of around 15 to 20 seconds to get the stars sharp in the shot. But there's a trick and it's called a star tracker. And you can see my star trackers here and it's basically a device which counteracts the rotation of the Earth. So my main star tracker I use is the um, Skywatcher Star Adventurer. Um, this is a pretty old version of it. Uh, they uh, make it white now, but this one is a tank. It, uh, I've bought it second hand and it works like a charm. I mean, uh, there's a scope in here and you um, point it at Polaris and if you point it right uh, your camera goes up here and it will just rotate uh, to counteract the rotation of the earth. So you make uh, you can make really long exposures of two, four, maybe even ten minutes, who knows. And that is one tracker I use. Um, I also use the Move Shoot Move tracker uh, which is pretty small as you can see. Uh, I also have a, a laser here, uh, which you uh, just go put in here. <laughs> I hope you can see it. But you just put this on your tripod. Uh, you put the laser in and you point the laser to Polaris. Uh, you turn it on, put your camera on and you're off to go. Super flexible setup, uh, very lightweight easy and quick to set up. Um, for my Canon 6D in combination with the Sigma 14-24 to lens it is a bit too heavy for the setup so that's also why I use the larger star adventure uh, most of the time but I always bring this as a backup. I even made uh, some shots, uh, some uh, good shots with uh, the 135 millimeter. so definitely a recommended tracker if you want to try it out. It's also a lot cheaper than the star adventure. So what else do I use? Well, a pretty handy device is an intervalometer. Uh, I've explained it before in this vlog here. Um, but it, this intervalometer I plug into my Canon 6D and I can program uh, how many shots uh, with what exposure time my camera should take. Um, unfortunately, I can't uh, program that in the body itself. Uh, and it only makes exposures of maximum 30, 30 seconds. Uh, my Fuji can fortunately uh, just shoot, uh, be programmed, in the body. 
So we are getting into winter time and in the winter it uh, mostly means that the humidity in the air is higher than in the summer. So what I've experienced is uh, oftentimes if I've been shooting for 15 or 20 minutes, uh, the high humidity in the air creates fog on my lens. Of course you don't want it because your photos will be all blurry and I use a dew heater to solve that. Um, yeah, this is a, uh, an example, you can get these on uh, eBay, Amazon, whatever. And what they do, well, you just uh, put that around your lens and I plug that in into a power bank, just like that. And it creates heat around your lens. So uh, your lens, uh, your glass will remain a bit warmer than the surrounding temperature and that prevents fog from forming on your lens super handy okay last but not least is a headlight please if you're serious about landscape astrophotography buy one of these i used to photograph uh, with a normal hand torch uh, for years but the disadvantage is that you always have one hand occupied um, i mean this you just put on your head and you can put it on and you have two hands it's <laughs> super simple super handy also this one has a red light function uh, which means uh, red light doesn't interfere with your night vision so if you're out in the dark uh, your eyes have to get used for about 15 minutes to the dark and you can see a maximum number of stars so, so to speak and uh, if you would put on this white light your eyes need 15 minutes again so if you're out shooting in a dark location why not enjoy the dark sky to its fullest use a red light all right and that's about it i mean uh, a recap if you have a camera body laying around uh, with a manual function and a lens even a kit lens and a, and a tripod you are good to go and you can create great results thanks for watching and see you on the next one mm -hmm.